to make photos like this, or maybe this, or that, or that, or something like that, you came to the perfect place. I will show you how the long exposure photo technique works. All you need is a camera, or your phone, and a source of light. Or, like me, you can build a fancy device like this. How I made this, I will show you in the next part of the video. Intro. So, how does it work? If we want to ask this question, we have to ask ourselves another question. How our camera works? A camera, among other, consists of a light sensor that is converting the light signal into electrical signal into a photo. So the light shines from the sun and bounces from every object that's not transparent and go through the lens to the sensor. And the sensor is converting the light signal. But there have to be something to cover the sensor. Because imagine a situation like this. We have a hipster here that wants a photo. And the photo would, would, would look like this. But he wants his photo from a different angle. So he or she goes up. And what is going to happen? The light is going to bounce from every single place that he stood. So, the overall photo would look like this. Two characters, and blurry, very blurry, between them. But, the cover makes it so, that the sensor picks like only in a fraction of a second that when the guy stood still. And this is changeable in cameras. We are going to use this feature to make photos like this. Not like this, like, like this. Because if we change the this para parameter to long exposure and we're going to run like crazy with a source of light, the sensor is going to pick that light from every point of space that we are shining it. So, this is how it works. It's relatively simple. Okay, let's build the fancy device. For designing my parts I use Fusion 360. Of course they don't pay me for that, but I really recommend this program. I won't get deeper on how all this works and so on, more on this topic later. So now I have all my parts designed, so it's 3D printing time. Yeah, so that print is going to take a while. In the meantime, we will drink my tea. Remember, remember, 5th of November, the gunpowder treason and plot. I know of no reason why gunpowder treason should ever be forgot. Yeah, so that's boring. I will take you to show you a better way of printing. Come with me. Now is the building part time. 
I know that for some of you it's boring like shit. So you can skip it in the left up corner. For those of you that want to watch it, I will play music. Quick explanation for the design. We have here a 2S LiPo battery, an on off switch, a DC DC converter because we have to drop down the voltage to 5 volts to control the Arduino, an Arduino that is connected to two tact switches and two potent potentiometers for controlling the LEDs. And the Arduino is transferring data to the LEDs via one wire communication. If you want to know how the LEDs works, you can check on the internet. Look for W82811. So, 
Now is the programming part. For programming, I'm using Eclipse Studio. That's because I'm used to programming AVR microcontrollers. So a quick explanation. An Arduino is actually an AVR microcontroller plus the hardware and the Arduino library. But you can program it like a normally AVR by using a USB ASP programmer like I did. So let's load up the program. And it's work. Yes. As you can see, I programmed a few features like like this or a self-defense from Epileptic Child and few other less important things. So let's watch how to make these photos. So of course it has to be dark. Now I'm changing the exposure light parameter. This two line means seconds. I change it to about 20 seconds, yeah. And all I have to do is to write something with my color one. And voila, there will be a photo. So that's it for the video. I hope you learned something interesting. And remember, just tighten up, you little bastard. Be safe. Outro.